Hi students, today I want to explain to you the concept of gate delay. So remember when we were doing these two level circuits, so suppose we have A and B that are ORed together, and then that result then gets ANDed with C. And then we have our result F out here on the other side. So um, this would be a or B anded with C. And suppose that the time it actually takes for this OR operation to complete is like 10 nanoseconds. And then maybe um, the time that it takes for this AND operation to complete is like 15 nanoseconds. So um, if we go through this OR here, and let's just say our output of the OR is X, um, this X is going to be kind of invalid for the first 10 nanoseconds of us using this circuit. And after 10 nanoseconds goes by, now um, this result X is ready to go into the AND here. But the whole time, this C has kind of been waiting for X out the door. So um, if after 10 seconds this guy comes through, and then after 15 seconds this AND operation is complete, then that means the F is not actually valid for um, 10 plus 15, 25 nanoseconds. So um, this is the idea of gate delay, and we can put this on a timing diagram. And it's helpful to see it on a plot like this. So the way we would make this is we put our inputs and outputs together on these horizontal lines. And then let's say this can be A and B and C. And then the result of A or B, we called that X. And then our output, we called that F. So then um, I can put some marks on here. Let's say this is 0 nanoseconds, and then 10 nanoseconds, and 20 nanoseconds, and 30 nanoseconds. OK, so here are my um, time labels. Now, um, suppose when we first use this circuit, we have an input of um, 1, 1, 1. So initially, we say that our inputs are 0, 0, 0, 0. And then at time equals 0, suppose they all go to 1. So now we're going to have a 1 coming in on A, and we're going to have a 1 coming in on B, and we'll have a 1 coming in on C. So here are 1s, and the 1s are coming into the circuit there. Okay. So um, we have 1 and 1 coming into this OR gate. And the result that comes out comes out on x. So since 1 OR 1 is equal to 1, then after 10 nanoseconds, we can have this result coming out on x. But the question is, what is on x before 10 nanoseconds? And the answer is, um, this is going to be invalid. OK, so we can't trust this as a reliable output because um, this hasn't yet evaluated to something. So there might be a value here that's stored from a previous state of the circuit that is untrustable. So it might read 0 or 1 based on what the previous state of the circuit was. But um, the actual state at the time that we want, we're going to have to wait 10 nanoseconds from the time that we put in the inputs that we desire for our circuit. So then um, at 10 nanoseconds, now this guy is ready to go into the AND. And um, this thing from 10 nanoseconds is going to need 15 nanoseconds after that in order to produce a valid output on F. So that means that F here is, oh no, that's 10 plus 15 puts us at 25 nanoseconds right there. So then F is going to have a valid output here of 1 after 25 nanoseconds. And then that means that this region in time is all 
invalid. Okay, so on our timing diagram here, we can see that we shouldn't, um, we shouldn't use this input from the output of the OR until 10 nanoseconds has elapsed, and we shouldn't trust this output on F until 25 nanoseconds has elapsed. So this is the idea of um, gate delay in our combinational circuits. And um, also, this is the first time you've seen the timing diagram, and this is going to be helpful as we start studying sequential circuits. Let me know if you have any questions.